Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Welcome everyone to this webinar. So today we're going to discuss about how to unlock low volume production and custom manufacturing with 3D printed and used parts. Quick introduction about myself. Uh, I am Juliette Combe. I am an application engineer in the product team at Formlabs and I am conducting research on use case on developing application for manufacturing and engineering environments. So the agenda for today, I'm first going to give some context with talking about a few common manufacturing challenges. And then I will discuss about what is uh, low volume production and custom manufacturing and why is it interested, interesting. Um, and then I will give the workflow for how to 3D print and use parts. I will also share some user stories and some results of stress testing. And then, as I mentioned, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. Now let's dive in. Um, first, a quick intro on some common manufacturing challenges that you may face today. So today, most manufacturing methods such as molding or forming are based on a concept of mass production, which is fabricating large quantities of identical goods. So you may be familiar with those techniques, those technique, and um, they are extremely cost efficient. Uh, they, uh, they are extremely cost efficient for high volume of production, as I mentioned, above 10,000 of part per batch. This is what we consider high volume production. Uh, however, they require uh, standardization, expensive machinery, and expensive tooling. Um, so you can see a picture, this is an injection mold. Um, and this rarely allow for product modification in terms of design, but also materials. In contrast, uh, the fabrication of item based on unique specifications, so this is what we call uh, custom manufacturing. It is traditionally performed manually in small uh, workshop, machine shop, and um, it involves a lot of manual labor and therefore it leads to um, high cost per part. So to summarize um, this, you can see on this graph a few different approach to manufacturing. On the right side and the bottom, so this is the most common mass production that I just introduced. This is for very high volume and very little degree of customization. And then um, you have low volume production on the left and then custom manufacturing that has high degree of customization and then there is also um, a, a third a fourth area which is called mass customization and it's basically creating large, large quantities of individually custom built parts and so all those three um, are pretty challenging to achieve um, cost efficiently you can see on this graph is the cost per part depending on the volume of production and are represented formative, subtractive and additive manufacturing. And as you can see, uh, formative and, and subtractive method are very expensive at first for low volume and then got uh, much, much less expensive over time, while additive manufacturing is quite steady, steady and directly 3D print part in low volume is actually uh, less expensive than using traditional manufacturing method. So this is what I want to discuss today. Um, so basically additive manufacturing uh, or 3D printing is really a powerful tool to um, make low volume production, custom manufacturing and basically on demand production. So it, it enables manufacturer to tighten supply chain, shorten lean time, uh, with local production as well and um, meet changing business needs rapidly. So why? Because uh, 3D printing is a tool-less tool fabrication process compared to what we show in the in the intro, uh, what we saw in the intro with um, very expensive tooling for the most forming method. Um, so 3D printing doesn't require cost and uh, time for tooling which really reduce the time for um, producing. 
And then it also provides uh, flexibility to revise your product quickly and accelerate time to market to introduce your, your product. Um, and also it enables um, customization and, and offering new design freedom to build complex parts uh, using, for example, organic shape, lattice or intricate shapes uh, without any additional cost because the complexity of the design is directly integrated in the CAD. Now let's um, just talk about why our user will be um, interested in doing low volume production and custom manufacturing. So I'm just going to share some use cases, like why is it interesting and how some other users are doing it already. First, one of the first use cases and a very common one is doing bridge manufacturing. So we have a lot of users that are interested in that. It's a stage in the product development process that bridge the gap between prototyping and production, as the name says. And this allows to reduce mass production risk. So by using 3D printed pilot runs um, for product testing, for example, or for pre-sale or for market validation, this really allows to test the product, test the market before committing to expensive tooling for mass production. So um, this is still a new part. So a new part is, um, is, basic, is basically part that are being sold to the final customer uh, and used by the final customer. Um, this is still a new part, but this is not yet mass production. So you can see on the left, this picture is an example of um, a, one of our users, Tension, Tension Square, that are making medical devices and they've been producing pilot run with SLS printing for testing the market uh, for the medical device. And then on the right side, um, this is a picture of how some users will use 3D printing uh, to address supply chain shortage. So 3D printing can be used to produce stopgap parts during um, time of shortage. And so this is an example of a 3D printed uh, COVID test swap that have been used by many customers during the pandemic. And so this is a great um, situation where um, this is not mass production neither. This is really temporary solution to increase supply chain, supply chain resilience. All right. Next example. So another very popular use case are aftermarket parts. So aftermarket manufacturer create a new product that are being added to original uh, product from the OEM, original equipment manufacturer. And uh, so for them introducing new innovative product while keeping up with the product updates um, from the OEM can be quite challenging. So they have to be reacting quickly and producing parts um, um, most, almost on demand. And so 3D printing those, uh, those parts is, um, is a great way for them to uh, basically be, be fast in iterating, adapting to the product, but also building very complex geometries and improving the product with tailored, um, tailored path and tailored components uh, for the customers. So you can see on the left an example of Battle Beetle, Be Battle Beaver customs that are making components for a gaming controller from PlayStation. And then on the right side, you have a Jetboat Pilot, also aftermarket manufacturer for um, uh, jet sports. And another, um, another use case is also for spare and replacement parts. So a lot of companies are really interested in moving from uh, physical inventory to digital inventory. So this eliminates spare, spare part management planning um, and also just keeping the physical space and having to um, uh, forecast how many parts you're going to have to uh, produce uh, for a product. So basically, you just have to start a CAD model and uh, produce on demand the spare part that you need. You also have companies that will directly choose uh, 3D printing at, as the first manufacturing method so that they don't have to do repair and they can treat the product as a consumable.
All right, and another use case obviously for doing custom manufacturing in ill volume. So with 3D printing, you can actually do um, custom manufacturing for product innovation. So you can unlock the um, complexity of the design at no extra cost. You can also build new business model. Uh, so this is an example, we have two examples here. One is uh, eyewear 3D printed with SLS. And the right one is New Balance, really printed in sole uh, for a specific shoe uh, edition, a sport shoe edition, edition. So they are using a specific lattice that gives um, the uh, performance needed for the material and for the insole. So those are two examples on how to use 3D printed for uh, design and unlocking design, but also building new business model. And as I mentioned before, mass customization is also um, an extension of that on how to do product innovation and um, unlocking the customization possibility to have new proposals for your customers. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about customization later on in the presentation. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.